So hello everyone. My name is Emery Thomas. I'm a Microsoft 365 developer at Avanade. You can reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn. As you can see, um, I've been contributing to this great community for some time now. And this is my second demo on this call. And today I'm going to talk to you about the web part report web part. So what does it do? Uh, this web part displays a report of all web parts uh, used in a SharePoint site using either a list or a chart. Why did I build this web part and why it could be interesting for you to use it? Well, because you can get, uh, get a quick view of all web parts used in a SharePoint site. And you can also easily identify the use of custom web parts. To do that, it uses the graph, uh, Microsoft Graph API with the pages and uh, web parts endpoint, the MS Graph client, and some PNP React controls to display the data. And now let's switch to a quick demo of the web part. Okay, so here you you have the the web part report. So with the the list of all the web parts used in this particular SharePoint site. So for each web part, you have the web part type, the web part ID and the title of the page uh, where the web part is used. You also have the site ID. So here it's always the same, but if someday we add a new feature to this application to get web parts from other sites, then the, the site ID could be useful. You can use the search bar. For example, here, if I search for PNP, here, I know that on this site, uh, some uh, PNP modern search web parts are being used. And now let's say that I want to switch to a chart view to have a more, uh, let's say, graphical view of my web parts. So to do that, I'm going to click on edit to edit page and here wait wait sorry instead of clicking here to edit the web part and display the property pane of the web part i'm going to click here on this drop down to select the chart option and then here i have my uh, my chart my chart view i'm going to click and republish here. So the chart view displays the web part in a more, let's say, aggregated way. So for example, here, uh, I don't have the list of every single web part, but I can see easily that on my site, I have four events web parts. So now, Let's go back to the slide to see some code. So the first thing that I want to do when uh, I'm loading uh, my application, my web part, is to get, uh, to get all the web parts on my site. So to do that, first, I need to get all the pages uh, that I have on my site. So with the pages endpoint of the graph API, and I only I only need the ID and the title. Once I've done that, sorry, for all the pages uh, that I got, I'm going to get the web part on this page. So I'm using the page ID 
for each page and the web parts endpoint to get the web parts. And once I have all the web parts, I can display it using uh, first the list view control, uh, which is uh, really, really easy to use. Now, I want to, if I want to hide uh, my list view control to display the child view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use top actions. And to do that, I'm going to implement the get top action configuration function. I want to use a, a drop down top action with a list option for the list view and a chart option for the chart view. And what's going to happen if is when uh, I click on the chart option, it's going to update the display option property so that the, the list view will be hidden and the chart view will be displayed. And the chart view is using another great uh, PNP React control, the chart control. So the, the chart control was a, a bit more tricky to use because, uh, as I said earlier, it displays the, the web parts in a more aggregated way. So I had to um, to reorganize a bit my data because, as you can see here, it requ it requires labels, which is an array of strings, and data, which is an array of numbers. So to do that, here, I've used a map data model to have for each web part title, which are my strings, a dedicated number, which represents the number of uh, web parts I have on the SharePoint site. For example, here, I have Two, oops, sorry, two text web parts on my site. And once I have uh, the data like that, I can easily build my array of numbers and array of strings to use in the chart control. So the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is not directly linked to the to the web part itself, but uh, it's the Microsoft 365 developer proxy that I've used for the development of the web part and that I'm using right now for the demo. Because one of the features of the of the proxy is to be able to mock API responses. For example, here. If I try to get uh, pages for this specific site, which is my demo site, it will return this set of pages instead of the real pages that I have on my site. And I can do the same for the web parts, meaning that for each page, I've created a set of web parts to, to return. So instead of creating many pages and for each page uh, adding many web parts, I just have to create all the data in, uh, in, a, in a JSON file and then launching the proxy. And it turned out that the, the proxy was even more useful to me because the um, page Microsoft Graph API is uh, being updated right now. So if I launch the web part without using the proxy and mocking responses, I might, I might have some errors and uh, the, the, the web part might not work properly. 
So I'm not very lucky because uh, I've developed the, the web part a few weeks ago, but just before the demo, the, the updates uh, are rolling out. So anyway. That's it for me. Uh, thank you very much. I hope it was interesting. Uh, let me know in the chat if you have any question. And back to you, you go. Thank you.